Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week two of the Heroes Hype Amateur League. I'm Sean Forcourt, Jester Delaney, and today our special co-caster is the other half of the Miss Cooks crew for Eye on the Storm. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Miss JC Gillyweed Gluck. How are you doing, Miss? I am doing great. How are you doing, Forcourt? It's been a heck of a day. A lot of things <laughs> being done. And then, of course, uh, we couldn't get your webcam up on my Skype. Mm -hmm. My silly, silly Skype. But we fixed it. We're all good. We, did. we got all we're these ready. teams now ready to go. It's, it's, it's a good day. We are. And we're starting out with two of teams who have awesome names. We've got Risky Biscuits <laughs> yeah, and goodness. Runny Gravy and Dwarves United. And if I don't see a single dwarf on that team, I'm going to be pretty, pretty miffed. Well, we're, we're definitely going to be looking forward to some Mirrodin and Falstead in that regard. So uh, we have 15 teams today, all signed up and rip around to go. I don't think some of them knew we were supposed to start half hour ago, but we are fairly relaxed here. And it's, I mean, I, we're just in for a good night of heroes. So as you said, we do have the Risky Biscuits and the Runny Gravy. Don't know why they have two parts to their name, but who knows? <laughs> Maybe somebody's named Biscuit and the other is named Gravy. But uh, the other side, Dwarves United, these are both, I believe, teams from week one. We've had actually quite a few repeat teams today. Uh, the Rising Taquitos are back. They were the number two seed last week. Although I don't see the fairy dragons, the happy fairy dragons. They're the ones that took home first place, uh, more or less. So I don't know what happened to them. They also didn't show up to the ESL yes, uh, on Sunday. So I was a little sad on that front. But uh, Dwarves United is back, Throw Academy is back, Mim Vitality is back as well, and the Prime Evils Gaming, I think, are new this week, but they were in the ESL Cup on Sunday, so I'm a little bit familiar with them. It's good to see a lot more interest developing here in the amateur scene. Yeah, it's really awesome to see teams, besides the names that we know and love so well, but to see new teams coming up and also to see them returning as well. Indeed. But we have started the picks and bans yes, for this game. So uh, we'll get, we're gonna be on Dragonshire and uh, why don't we start with the Risky Biscuits who had the first pick and ban? Sure, yeah. They decided that uh, since they get first pick and it's Dragonshire, for some reason they're going to snipe out the hammer. As a first pick, I would have thought they'd like to take the hammer, but, you know, maybe the dwarves, <laughs> they, they have some super secret strategy. Maybe they outfit it with dwarven mithril. Who knows? Uh, but on the flip side, we are going to be banning out the Illidan. Very popular bans in the current meta in this Killyweed. Yeah. Uh, they're both super, super strong right now. And then Dwarves United opting for that double support that we see quite a bit by picking Uther and Malfurion to start. Well, first we gotta go back over to the Risky because uh, the pick bands is a little bit more of a snake pick. Don't know if you're familiar with that, but it will go back and forth <laughs> from blue, then two red, two blue, two red, last blue, and then last red. Right. So, uh, we actually pick up the Rhaegar first there for the Whiskey Biscuits, but then, as you said, mm -hmm. the double support comes in with the Illidan and the Malfurion. So, you know, with the new meta, we've seen a heck of a lot of changes to the way that teams draft these days, and this is something, even two weeks ago, I would have said it would never have happened. I mean, we haven't had a Stitches pick. There's no Vala or Tychus. It's literally four supports on the board because that's going to be a Tassadar to go with the Rhaegar as well. Yeah, it's crazy to see it change so fast to uh, the supports being being important. But we, uh, you did say no Stitches, but that's been changed because the second or I guess the third pick would be uh, Stitches on Risky Biscuits. All right, so we're gonna get ourselves a good frontliner and a Stitches who can heal himself, Rhaegar who's going to heal him, and Tassadar with the shields, double healing ward as well for the Biscuits. That's, um, it's almost team never die at this point. So <laughs> I'm curious what kind of damage we're gonna be throwing into the mix there. And again, we are gonna be thinking this is the Dragonshire. It's not necessarily all about the Assassins. Siege comps have worked extremely well in this uh, map, which is why we see the Sergeant Hammer ban. But I wouldn't be surprised to see a Zagara coming out in the next uh, little bit, a Vala perhaps, could definitely some really strong AoEs. But also with double supports on both sides, I'm curious to see if we're going to see a Zeratur or a Thrall in the mix there as well. Oh yeah, that uh, Void Prison. So deadly in those team fights. Um, on Dwarves United, we've got the next picks for them. They picked Tychus and Nazebo. What do you think about that? Well, as I said, we're likely to see some ranged DPS and some specialists. 
not any of the ones I listed. Yay for me. But uh, <laughs> you know, putting in Tychus and the Nazebo. Nazebo is definitely a band-worthy material these days. If it's not a Nazebo, it's a Sergeant Hammer. If it's not a Milden, it's a Rhaegar. You know, there, there's a lot of interchangeability there. But also, you know, again, this map shrines. You got to capture the dragon. Uh, very good synergy there for the Nazebo because the zombie walls, there's a lot of small spaces that they can become very useful. The ravenous from over the multitude of trees that permeate here throughout the map. It's uh, a very strong pick for sure. And right now we don't really have an answer in terms of the ravenous here from the Risky Biscuits. They don't have anybody that can really interrupt Nazebo except for perhaps a hook or a gorge. And, if the dwarves are on point, they're not going to let the stitches near. So you got to be looking for now some kind of pick that can deal some damage from afar, or perhaps even give us a ranged interrupt. Uh, a Taranda, for example, would work out in both of those regards. But it also looks like a hero that we have not seen a lot of since the new patch, since he did get a little bit of a rework. Falstead is coming back to the battlefield. I love the new Falstad. I've been playing a lot of him and I've been having a lot of fun with it. Um, he did change quite a bit, so I know a lot of people have probably been figuring that out. Do you think that maybe they would take the uh, the wind to the, the gust, mighty gust, that's what it's called, to deal with the Nazebo ult? Maybe that's what their thought is? Or do you think this, they'll still want the damage that comes from the Hinterland Blast? I have yet to see a team actually go with Mighty Blast. <laughs> I have yet to see it. I mean, it's <laughs> it's so hard to say no to the damage output of the hinterlands. It, it does. It really is. But I think this is the answer that we were looking for because we go for a Zagara for the last pick here. The Devouring mm. Maw is likely to be uh, a big target, a big seeking you know Maw coming for uh, our Nazebo player because he's not really going to be able to move out of it once he starts the Ravenous. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're going to be seeing the Mighty Gust. I really do think it will be the Hinterlands. And uh, until somebody really shows me otherwise in a competitive game, I don't <laughs> think that will really get picked I a lot. I keep hoping. I keep hoping that we'll get to see it one day. One day. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool seeing some wind thrown. And it is nice that you get to stay back. But you're right. The damage from Hinterland Blast is so hard to say no to. It has to be some kind of big zoning comp, I think, for it to, to really shine. But uh, yeah. either way, the dwarves, they need to put themselves a, a tank. And right now, what kind of options do we have? Arthas did get nerfed recently. Anubarak has been uh, out of the picture. Chen is actually pretty popular over in Europe, but not this side of the pond, which does lead us to our more popular picks of either ETC, who has apparently been made into a hat on my head, according to chat, and uh, Mirrodin. <laughs> Or Diablo, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> or Diablo. <laughs> Why not? Why I've not? actually seen some more picks of Diablo lately, and uh, the displacement can be really nice, but man, if you get those wrong and start pulling people out of um, damage, AoE damage on the ground, that could be that could be pretty rough on your team. So here's hoping that uh, Dwarves United will be able to uh, make the Diablo pick work for them. Well, that is going to be the hope. So will it be a lightning breath? Will it be the return of the apocalypse? Uh, the lightning breath has definitely been favored more and more, but mm -hmm. Diablo did get reworked this patch, which is why he was seeing a little bit more of a surge uh, in his pick rates. He, he's definitely a lot smoother to play with the shadow charge because it's definitely been a bit more of a janky ability in the past. But mm -hmm. uh, in terms of a frontliner, he has double support at his back. As I said, you know, between the four supports on the table and these two tanks, it's going to be really hard to kill either them by themselves. So, you know, one assassin, one tank, one specialist, and two supports each team. Very similar comps. We're gonna have to see who comes out on top here for our first game of the night on Dragon Shire. I'm pretty pumped. Looks like we're going to be getting into it. You know, you talked about the Diablo Lightning Breath, and I noticed that the two supports on Dwarves are Uther and Malfurion, both who have quite the potential to lock down quite a few of the heroes on the other team. So that could be a good a uh, place for the Lightning Breath to really burn down all of the other heroes on Risky Biscuits. Yeah, the running grave. especially if uh, they all kind of, you know, clump up and get ready for capping a shrine, mm -hmm. capping a dragon. You know that there's going to be quite a few targets uh, ready to go. So here we go. Risky Biscuits and Dwarves United. It's uh, It sounds very epic when you kind of say it like that for almost no reason whatsoever. But, uh, <laughs> we are here it's to the first It's all about how you practice. say it. It is. It's just like... <laughs> I, uh, I almost want to s sound like they're, they're racehorses coming around the bed. And here comes the Risky Biscuits and the Runny Gravy. <laughs> Following up close is going to be the Dwarves United. It's just, they all do have really weird names. 
all the weird, is, weird, weird isn't the right word. Weird isn't the no, right word. Not weird. Mm, Unique. What's the word? You, oh, I see. Unique Eccentric. Uh, crazy. Not crazy. Mm. <laughs> well, I thought you were going to say creepy. Work on that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe. If you call a horse something that's food related, it could be a little creepy. Like risky biscuits. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. The risky biscuits <laughs> and the runny gravy. It's just it's so, it's so nice. It's really yeah, it's fun. fun to say. All right, guys. So on your blue hand side, on your left hand side in the blue, it will be uh, our biscuits and gravy. Let's see. It's going to be Weirdo, Beast and Shen, Mountain Dew, Sh Bay. Oh, okay, Mountain Douchebag, I get it. Moozies <laughs> and uh, the Beowulf. Would you like to introduce our red? Battle commencing in of course, on the red side, seconds. we've got Trav McNasty, Jabba Han, J. Kerps, Archimedes, Five, and four, Arctura. Three, Archimedes, two, that's such a one. strong name right there. Strong name. I know, right? Yeah, Bringing out the Lumberjack again. Uther at that. Isn't that a favorite of yours, the Lumberjack Uther? Uh, I do really like that skin. I actually got to interview a BlizzCon cosplayer who was cosplaying as Lumberjack Uther, and it was awesome. <laughs> One of the highlights of BlizzCon, I think. If you guys don't watch Gillyweed streaming hots, and I don't know what you're doing with your life, but uh, I know that you're a big fan of the Brightwing. Hopefully we'll see a little bit of that tonight. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Good. All right, so what kind of lane compositions do we have? It's a 1-1-3. One, one, we got the party lane basically filled up here into the bot. And why do they go down there, really? Well, bot lane has the potential for more of a push because it's got three different camps. Um, it's got two Merc camps that are the Giants or the Sieges, I guess, and then the Bruisers on bot. Um, anything else I'm missing as far as that goes? No, it's exactly right. It's why we always try to put up a lot of pressure here. It's why bribe compositions were, were really popular back in the day. Although we have a lot more options these days to kind of just ignore bribe and just push, 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 win, win, win. I would have expected the Zagar to actually be into the bottom lane and put stitches up into the top. Uh, it's definitely something we see more and more with competitive. But, uh, you know, the... Biscuit said, nope, no dice today. The guy's actually still on top very well. And Archimedes, you know, with some of those hook pressures, almost going to go down for the first blood. Yeah, there we go. The last lightning rod was the kill from the, uh, the mountain douchebag, as it turned out. And it's a good timing on that kill, because this kill will now actually negate any kind of real pressure Red can do up against that shrine. And look at that. Both of them going blue. It's all up to Moozies now to pick up the Dragon Knight. There's Trav McNasty doing his best to stop Moozies from picking up the Dragon Knight, but Falstaff's coming in. Mountain Douchebag may be able to uh, push away Trav McNasty and possibly uh, get him to have to go back, which would be a good time for them to possibly pick up the Dragon uh, Dragon as well. Uh, but oh, too little too late. They could not grab it as we uh, had a little bit of a resurgence here from Red. Trav McNasty into the bottom lane uh, and Archimedes and Arctura. They were able to actually cap it out. So, you know, if you do keep one, you are denying a dragon to your opponents, but you're not going to be able to cap it yourself. Most teams are okay with that. A lot of them like to just try to soak up to 10 or at least look for some kind of bigger advantage before they commit to the dragon. I'm a little concerned for Red up top, Gilly. Are you concerned? Yeah. Why are you concerned? Oh, because Zagara has got quite the push. Yep, and uh, Tychus is very, very low. They may have to swap someone up to continue getting that experience, or they would miss out on getting experience. I would have expected somebody to come say hi to to be a wolf by now. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't have any escape mechanisms except the movement speed on creep. So you got somebody with some nice CC up there, and well, Tychus can just go to town, but he doesn't really have the hit points to do much of anything with that top run right now. Yeah, he's uh, he's still pretty low. He's trying to stay safe and maybe work his his health back up. But yeah, unless somebody else comes up there, I think probably we're gonna start seeing some damage on the towers uh, soon from Beowulf. And I gotta really give it to Beowulf. He's uh, done an excellent job in the solo lane. And yeah, uh, in terms of the experience, though, I mean, neither team really kind of pulling farther ahead. It will be a level seven with a small window here for the Risky Biscuits. And uh, oh, there it is. But as we said, small window indeed. No Dragon Knight as of yet, but we do got a little bit of Merc pressure now coming to bottom. Yeah, with that pressure that it's possible that Risky Biscuits could push back Dwarves United and try to take that bottom shrine once again. And then, of course, we'll start the 
fight in the middle to try to pick up that Dragonite. Sneak it, if you will, as often happens in this early game. A lot of people often think that uh, you have to get both shrines right away, but sometimes as long as you can keep them from getting one, uh, that's all you need. Trev McNasty taking a lot of damage. He's definitely gonna have to back up. Uh, Beast and Shin is putting it on the chase. He's gonna try to get that shrine and we're gonna see if the blue team will be able to take it. Well, it'll be a small window, but we do got two now into the mid. Moozies and Mountain Douchebag should be able to set up shop fairly nicely, but you know, Spider's already chasing off the False Dead, and yeah, it just was enough. There's uh, the three-man pressure persisted throughout from red into the bottom lane, and the Dwarves were able to recap the point. Again, though, the problem I think that keeps going back and forth is that top lane is not looking so good, and it always seems to be red on the retreat when it comes to a lot of these engagements. Yeah, that's definitely a good point uh, to note there. We're sending, once again, I think Red will be able to take, Diablo just pushes Rhaegar right off of the shrine. And BBQ Weirdo is definitely gonna have to get out. Barbecue Weirdo, I'm not sure. Definitely gonna have to get out and uh, we're back, yep, we're back to the three man versus three man on Bob. Well, here comes Moozies. He's going to try to put the numbers advantage here for the Risky Biscuits. Good healing words going down. And Archimedes, he is the man. He is Uther. Uther walks away from everything. A lot of people are always like on the on you know, on Twitter and uh, Reddit and all that. Just like, what's a great beginner hero that uh, we should go and learn? You should definitely pick up an Uther. He's very survivable, good support. Everybody loves getting healed. And you walk away from a heck of a lot of pressure. Yeah, you can even you can even do give some stuns out as well, which is very very nice. Now, uh, Risky Biscuits does have level ten, but with that last wave, Red uh, keep saying Red Dwarves United is finally able to take it, as well as the top shrine for once. So now it's uh, Dwarves United who might be able to try to put on some pressure and uh, get Ooh. that Red. Trav McNasty, yeah, he's actually, yeah, that's the, the big combo right there. Hook, Gorge, over the wall, and this is gonna be some really intense pressure that Blue can now actually put on. The Biscuits might be able to even secure themselves that dragon, but ultimates are up, and uh, the heroics have been chosen. We do got the Devouring Maw, Ancestral, we saw the Gorge, and we saw the Mighty Gust, as uh, you actually were talking a little yes! bit about that. It was actually used right there to, to make sure that Diablo was just cemented in place. But, yep, this is the first for me, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll have to see if that's what you score if you were right and they can use them on. Down at bot, Artura getting very low as Falstad drops the lightning rod on him, and he is going to leave. They're able to keep that shrine while uh, Muzi's and Barbecue Weirdo try to, uh, to get Dragon Knight, but... I don't know, Trav McNasty not letting that happen. Yeah, and Jacob is actually up top, has now joined the fight here with Jobohan, so they're going to be taking the top. Looks like Red is actually on its way to take bottom. There's no Tassadar mid, so yeah. if Trav McNasty, if he hoofs it over, this could be the Dragon Knight for Red. Does Blue actually realize that? Yeah, they do. Here comes Weirdo, here comes Moozy. <gasps> oh, the Zagara, the creep drop from above. That was so clutch right there, so no Dragon quite yet. For the dwarves, they're still looking for their first opportunity and uh, just fights everywhere. Bottom lane, there's a skirmish going on. We got some of that uh, good old fashioned healing ward going back and forth. The Mountain Douchebag has to do, you know, book it. Beast and Shen not really able to do too much for him, but it looks like Blue is able to get the top, so we are going to continue this merry go round of shrines. Now, while all of this has been going on, Blue Team is slowly building on that experience they did. Now they've got level 13 talents, about a level in advance. So they may be able to make something happen there. Zagara's really trying to keep that top shrine, but I don't think that that's going to happen well until her teammates can get there. And uh, once again, Red uh, Dwarves United has both teams, but Muzis is there to watch the shrine. You are right about the level 13 advantage. When you're up an entire uh, talent tier, it's definitely mm -hmm. a, a bit more of a powerful punch that you're landing. And so far, you know, looking at it, Stitches, he has himself a nice slam build going through it all. Uh, a very typical looking Zagara build. No Mutalus today. It will be the group spines for the Hydralis. Uh, it's a nice support fight dog, uh, sorry, for the Rhaegar. He has the far sight. he has the healing totem, very good utility spells for the support to be picking up. 
Uh, looking at the dwarf, it looks very, you know, very standard for this patch. And even our Tassadar, like everything is looking pretty much spot on here from both. No crazy talents today other than the Mighty Gust. Which yeah. I'm still so pumped about. Yes. You're right. That's, um, <laughs> hmm. We'll have to see how well that actually comes into play. <laughs> when you're missing out that hinterland damage, that's a lot of bursts yeah. that you're now discounting from a lot of these yeah. team fights. So we'll have to see if Blue can still outburst their opponents. We got all five of Blue's United down on bot, and uh, they are they're looking to get some damage done, do some pushing. But Zagara is coming down, and I think we might see our first team fight, team fight here. We have uh, two kills on the board, but yeah, we haven't really had too much of a team fight as of yet. Oh, that could be a huge maw, and they do actually get two team members there of the dwarves into it. The oak gets popped out. That's going to be an Archon now out there as well. Divine Storm, that's going to be the Apocalypse. Hey. Trap McNasty as well. Beast and Shen is going to get the Ancestral healing. He's going to be okay. Hooks in that Odin, who just dashes away immediately. But despite all the efforts of both teams, nobody goes down. Yeah, every single heroic but Gorge was used there. The Blinding Winds did go down on Nazebo, which stopped it, but the, no damage. Now, Travic Nasty did hit Gorge, but he wasn't quite able to bring him into the base, and so he's able to get away. And uh, Red Team is getting low. It looks like they're going to disengage and allow Blue possibly to take that shrine. Well, if Blue takes Shrine, that will put us a little bit more pressure here into the mid. And it has almost been forever since we've seen the other two lanes. I mean, everybody down here, you know, the experience has slowed out a little bit. You know, j mm -hmm. he's thinking, yeah, I can go get this top Shrine, no problem. It looks like Jobohan there is to cover the actual summoning area. But Blue, they're not making any move for it whatsoever. They are five-man pushing down this gate. That's going to be a little bit more experience in their pocket. And a hook is going to be the end of Malfurion. Clutch. But so I uh, I like this blue risky bis biscuits has a shrine and they're not immediately going right away. They really want to get this for extra experience will be awesome. Sound McNasty stop trying to stop them as well, but they are going to try to get the experience before they run off. Yeah, they're thinking it's of just, it. Just yeah, they are. Come on, guys. A few more shots. Moozies, he's yeah. stepping up to the plate. There we go. <laughs> level 16 achieved. So it is about uh, just a little bit over a level difference between the two teams. And 16, that, that's big, though, for the Biscuits because, you know, we got, uh, it, well, let's take a quick look. Earth Grass, the Brood expansion, so two charges of the Hunter Killer. The second strike, so we got two charges of Psionic Storm, blessed. more or less. Uh, has a little bit of a short window to cast it, but it's still there. That, uh, okay, this is something I've not really personally seen. Hammer Time actually picks up for Falstead. So, first basic yeah. attack against a target hit by hammering will stun them for just under a second roll. That is something I'm very curious to see how that will come into play here. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen that either very much. Uh, maybe they're just wanting to make sure they have extra stuns uh, for Nazebo as well. Um, just in case for some reason, or uh, maybe they've got an idea for someone else too. Oh, Stitches gets the hook on Ar Arcturus, and Arcturus, sorry, and pulls him in. He instantly dies to Risky Biscuits, and once again, they have uh, the player advantage. So that was actually, uh, uh, the synergy is, basically, is now clear to me as to why we have Mighty Gust. We're literally relying on Shen here, for these hook combos. So the hook, Gorge, and that forces your team to kind of chase the, the stitches. Like, no, I'll save you, Arctura. I'll save you. Mm -hmm. But then they get hit by a mighty blast in the face, and they get thrown all the way back, and Arctura dies a, a very lonely death out in the wilderness. <laughs> That's, that just happened in that top fight. The synergy is definitely there. I think somebody in chat said it's the new Ninja Void Prison. It's a very common uh, practice to see that synergy. You get the mm -hmm. hook, the gorge, and then you Void Prison the team. They can't help the oh, really? whatsoever. It's a very similar thing here. And, uh, you know what? I might have said, you know, we'll have to see how they deal without the damage. But if they continue to get picks like that, it forces them into situations like this. Four men, or well, four teammates of red are up. They can't contest, and we have our first draw. First Dragonite, and we're not until level 18. It's pretty crazy. Archimedes is running out to get the Divine Storm down, followed by the Apocalypse, and 
the Ravenous Spirit. That's going to take out Rhaegar and Force. Uh, team needs to step back just a bit. Uh, but the Dragonite is still doing damage, dropping the fire on the Odin. Traffic Nasty continuing to push back. Beast and Shin's almost dead. Can they catch him? They're trying to keep him alive. He runs the other way. It's like, you can have my teammates just leave me alive. Traffic Nasty, yeah, he's looking for that kill, but so very close at the end of it all. Mountain Douchebag, he's going in with the barrel roll, but he can't quite solidify that kill. Instead, he's going to Lightning Rod Jobohan there. Jobo's going to lose you know, a few hit points there. Nice boomerang off the back of that power throw, but that will be it for the kill. As, you know, Beast and Shen live through it all, but now we're seeing a little bit more of the team, of, of the red team synergy. They had the stun, it was the sprinting Uther into the Divine Storm, and then they apocalypsed, and that led so much of the Ravenous Spirit to just way laced, uh, way laced, wow. Uh, lay waste to uh, the opponent's team. <laughs> so that's how the Rhaegar died. It was a good amount of damage. It's a nice synergy when pulled off. And both these teams have, uh, you know, in some of these team fights, really shown us now their teamwork and their potential. Mm -hmm. Synergizing those heroic abilities. Looks like they're trying to possibly catch some of uh, Dwarves United by hiding in that sort of triangle bush area. It's a very popular hiding place to try to catch people. But Dwarves United, so far, not taking the bait. They know what's up. And they are sticking together as five. One of the most, uh, well, I don't know. One of the worst things, there you go, that you can do late game is actually split up, get yourself caught. Here comes the combos again. Look at that apocalypse Whoa. doing work. Rhaegar, with that, on the back of that mighty gust, will actually live, but there goes the Falstead, and that's a two for nothing exchange. Small areas and the, the big rune size of the apocalypse led into some pretty good chains. We had the, our, the divine storm on top of that, and the ravenous just did work. Two for zero, and now Red fully in control of this map because Shrines are coming up in 10 seconds. We could see their first dragon of the game. <laughs> uh, well, at least Blue Team did finally catch someone. They did pull Uther in behind the gate, and Uther tried to get away, but once a second hook finally finished him off. But uh, yeah, for now, they're having gonna have trouble dealing with this mid, it looks like Jabahan's gonna have no problem uh, getting the Dragon Knight. Yep, Grab McNasty playing Interference. Very, very smart there for the team. You see the fishing hook from Shen. Fortunately, it's not gonna catch himself a Diablo today. j Kerps just going to town on top of this gate that's basically rolling up the red carpet here. This is red team for Jobo. I get it, I get it. Ah. I get it. <laughs> And uh, this is a good opportunity for their first port. It's kind of weird to see level 18 first port, but hey, there it is. The experience will definitely be very useful. You see the Rhaegar ultimate going down. Traffic Nasty got a little bit too far forward. They couldn't solidify the kill on, that, on the Rhaegar. Now Red, unfortunately, is just going to be rebuffed. Perhaps maybe not they're going to get that port. Caster Curse coming in with that. Yeah, Risky Biscuit's doing a really good job of sticking together and keeping uh, keeping that four alive, denying some more experience. They're about to hit 20, and once again, they would have the talent lead as well, which would be another great opportunity for them to engage upon Dwarves United. Can you tell us a little bit about the 20 talents for those that don't know? Yeah, the level 20 talents um, often provide a lot more damage. Uh, in this case, we've got Twilight Archon for Tassadar, Bolt of the Storm for Stitches, so we can bolt forward and grab. Uh, grab people and uh, storm shield for Rhaegar, epic mount for Falstad, and everybody's hero ability is going down as one at once. Unfortunately, they already used the mighty gust, and there is the ravenous spirit. It looks like he might be able to yes get outside of the range. So just Rhaegar goes down there in that team fight. There was, there was a lot of a lot of stuff happening there. Yeah, eventually the top four did actually go down, and we traded out a lot of the Dragonite hit points, but I mean, expendable hit points, and he'll, he'll come back. He always wants to get through. There's always somebody willing to break him out of prison, so to speak. So, you know, Red, they were able to regroup and recoup, and they got themselves not only a kill, but the fort. They got themselves a little bit now map pressure. You see the Bruiser's going to be pushing down top. Moozy's is taking care of that. And we got some pings going down to the very bottom Bruiser's as well. So. Red, right now, I would say is actually uh, doing much better in terms of the map control here in the late game. 
Yeah, they, uh, they're they going to probably be able to take these bruisers without, yeah, blue team even trying to contest. They've still got Rayo down for 10 more seconds. Um, even though blue team does have those level 20 talents, I do like the epic mount choice for Falstad because he'll be able to fly everywhere that be able to make sure they're um, capping the shrines and just having really good map presence as well. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, Epic Mount is the new talent for Falstead that uh, greatly increases the usefulness of his passive because he kind of flies around. He doesn't, you know, he's not on a horse. He has the passive, of, uh, sorry, he has the mount of flight, which is, gets him from lane to lane on a cooldown. So now he has a smaller cooldown. He travels faster, and it's actually, it will save your bacon. It really will. It gets you out of a lot of tight mm -hmm. spots. You can definitely place a lot of map pressure now. I think about it. So it's uh, definitely one of the more popular towns for him. I was, a little, I was hopeful that we were going to see the wind tunnels at level 20, but wow, did you see that hook? <laughs> I did. That was an awesome hook. Uh, Diablo drops the apocalypse, and um, the ravenous spirit has gone down as well. They are able to stop it, though. So they're just going to go ahead and run away. Odin was popped by Javahan and Artura gets clipped, but can't be gorged. Barbecue Weirdo does not get the uh, Ancestral Healing off and instead dies, as does Stitches. And now Blue Team is going to have trouble with keeping the sport alive. Yeah, very much so. And some really good grouping there from Red. I mean, with the new Odin, he actually pulls down a nuke at level 20. And you can see that uh, right here, big red button. Uh, the Ragnarok missile is actually called down a nuke. That nuke did so much burst damage because we had the roots <laughs> down. Uh, you saw the double stun combo. It was a really good Mighty Gust from Falstead. Really good. He actually blew away the entire team, stopped out the Ravenous. That was uh, very on point from him. But as soon as we got those roots down and then some of those zombies and that nuke from Odin, that was just... That was the cherry on top. So Red, again, this late game, they're really blooming. They're keeping this map control. They're winning these fights. They're actually almost tied up in terms of the kills. But now another Dragonite going their way. And we don't have the defense here from Blue. They're very likely to lose out this sport, if not to keep it. You know, I was really proud that Red was able to turn that game around, even or that fight around, even though Stitches got the hook initially on Archimedes. That was really, really cool. It's Diablo immediately apocalypsed, and that forced everyone to have to start, sort of move to try to get away. Once again, Beast of Shin, though, grabs Archimedes, and this time he gets him past the gate. And even Divine Storm, I don't think, will save you, Uther. No, that's it. Yeah, not at all. I mean, Red was very smart. They knew that this wall here that they just destroyed was the weak point. Unfortunately, there's an entire gate between them, and even with that Dragonite, they're not going to be able to burst it down uh, enough to get that Uther out of dodge. So. Beast and Shen, he's been pretty on point with these these hooks. He's had a lot of hooks and the Gorge combo. He has the, the Bolt of the Storm now, as you were talking about earlier. So what he could even do is be like this far forward away from his gate, get the hook, get the Gorge, move over to the gate, and then blink behind it. And it's almost a guaranteed kill when you're that far away from your team. Yeah, just it's just crazy and scary. <laughs> Unless you're on Stitches' team, of course. I'm I'm uh, really curious. Jobohan literally just went straight home with that Dragon Knight, not even hurt, and wasted yeah. the entire cooldown. I'm a little curious what the decision making there was. I mean, you have a late game, 22 minute Dragon. You're down your healer. You can still poke. You can still get a lot of hero damage and a lot of structural damage from that Dragon. I think you know, going home is definitely a little bit of a waste. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It actually, it also kind of created space for for Risky Biscuits to be able to steal the Seek Giants as well uh, off of the side of Dwarves United. So um, that's less pressure that they'll be able to put on while um, Dwarf, or Risky continues to take other Siege Camps. And taking siege, siege Camps at this point, there's no objectives on the map. You know that your opponent are basically stuck in their base defending for a good moment. So yeah. Take the Merc camps, but you also see both teams, they're not spreading and getting camps. They're definitely staying together. And then, uh, you know, I'm gonna say this as often as I can, just to drill it home. The worst thing you can do late game is split up and get caught because a 60 second death timer could literally mean game over. We are blessed. Oh yeah, for sure. 
So blue team has just gotten, thanks to the Winions, the four <laughs> on top. And I think now that means that we are even on structures. Everyone still got their keeps, but everyone lost all their forts. No forts. What but, do you do? Uh, yeah, all the keeps. What, what do you suggest at this point, late game for both these teams? Uh, pushing like we're seeing uh, Risky Biscuits try to do, or is that is that too scary? Well, you're only going to be able to end the game if you take out the core, so pushing is never a bad option. Uh, but in this case, mm -hmm. blue is definitely going a lot more offensive. Red was thinking, yeah, we can go get those bruisers, but now they're thinking not. You need to do what Archimedes is doing. You need to charge him up. <laughs> Look at the Divine Storm into the Apocalypse. The Ravenous is out there as well, and bam, they got themselves the squish. Falstead is dead for 60 seconds. Weirdo with that ult looks like he's going to live, but we can easily just mount up and start chasing these guys down. If they can get one more kill, they can push for core. But they don't actually, no, they don't even need to. There's shrines on the table. So mm -hmm. without the pressure from the biscuits and the gravy, the red should <laughs> be able to implement a very late game Dragon Knight, and that should get them a key. But they gotta be confident with it. You know, it, they can't be afraid to spend the hit points of the Dragon Knight. Yeah, the, the uh, choice of push, always great, but losing somebody right before the shrines are up is definitely tough. So you see that uh, Risky Biscuits is just staying together, trying to get one of the shrines, but they weren't able to do so. And now once again, we're seeing a Dragon Knight from Jabba Han and Dwarves United. Yeah, and they hit, look at this dwarf. I mean, 1,200 damage it hit on these, on these structures. <laughs> but these are gates that are not going to live. He has a lot of hit points. He deals a lot of damage to structures. It took maybe a little bit too long. Now Rhaegar's back up, but a lot of heroics are still down. And yeah, Jovahan, feel free, spend the hit points, soak up the ammunition, uh, per perhaps don't get hooked and bolted just like J. Kerb there just got. <laughs> he is way too far back. But you know, hook, gorge, bolt, that is the big combo there. But again, don't don't go too far, Jovahan. Use your, oh wow, traffic. <laughs> another hook by Beast and Chin. Man, that guy and his hooks. They kill another one of uh, Dwarves United's member team members. But Diablo, his uh, hero trait is that if you collect enough soul stones, you are able to come back to life immediately. So thankfully, Diablo had enough, and Trav McNasty is already back in the game, although he did have to uh, be back at base. And once more, we are seeing a basing Dragon Knight. Two for two today. <laughs> The rarest of sightings, but uh, we, we got them all on camera here, boys and girls. It's, it's like the elusive <laughs> Yeti, Bigfoot out there. Either way. Elusive, um, huh? Yeah. This is just, uh, <laughs> Red is just not confident. They're not confident to stick around and play the poking game. And they have good reason. Beast and Shen is being absolutely a beast. I was going to ask if you thought he was being a beast. Uh, I think, I know. Uh, Tip my fedora and uh, say beastie. Yeah. My beast. Beast mode activated. My beast. I like my beast. <laughs> All right. This Zeebo's back is up. Being pretty good. For 27 minutes, this game, uh, very even. I wasn't expecting such a close game here first round, but uh, neither team really finding the edge they need here in the late game to, to end it out. Yeah. Uh, between the, the basing Dragon Knights, and those crazy hooks, I think everyone's just uh, staying on edge once again since shrines are down. We're just trying to get the Merc camps, getting mirror camps so far, so maybe we'll get to see another uh, cool team fight down at the Bottom Bruisers. Well, Bottom Bruisers is gonna be basically the only Merc camp left. Be very curious to see if both teams actually do end up uh, kind of butting heads at it. Level 23 apiece though. Uh, we've had a lot of time for these guys to try to figure out what they want to do. Now, my personally highest game I've ever gotten to is level 28. How about you? Dang, that's higher than I am! Oh. oh. Archimedes, he's Perfect. sprinting in. Oh my god, the three-man stun. Look at the apocalypse. That's one and the two. The Ravenous goes down. Mighty Gust, however, is going to stop it with that moss. There's no Ravenous today. But Beast and Shen low on the hit points. Weirdo not looking so healthy here either, but a good disengage from Blue will keep them in this. But once again, the shrines are coming up. Maybe Red should just like push the force now. Maybe they should just ignore the dragon and go for a fight or something. They haven't been very successful. Yeah, I agree. 
Uh, they're there, they've got Odin up, so it would be a great time. You could get a lot of damage done uh, to Beast and Shin, at least, is low. He's going to tap well, but of course, that will take a little bit of time for him to get his health back up. They're going to go for it. They're going to try to get this keep, and I think they've got it. Yeah, it, it looks like they got its number. They're about to hit level 24 on top of that. Some some really hard-hitting auto attacks are coming out from these guys. I mean, that Odin by itself is, is a massive damage to everybody at this point in the game. First keep at the 29-minute mark. Let us uh, <laughs> let us get a hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah. Indeed. All right, so once again, we're going for that Dragon Knight. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll see another keep from that, even. D dare we dream? The dream, the second keep with the <laughs> Dragon Knight. Oh, man. <laughs> uh. Well, I don't know, because they're just trading, yeah. trading uh, shrines at this point right now. That epic mount lets Falstad fly in and quickly fly back out, so that's gonna make it hard for uh, Dwarves United to take them without splitting up. Definitely a good tool here in this late game. That epic mount from Mountain Douchebag, he can literally just go straight into the bottom and then fly right top, get both shrines before Red can even uh, really react to it. And if the team keeps him busy here mid, I mean, that, that's going to be some good pressure for Blue. There's a lot of late game things that you can do with uh, the false head in terms of the split pressure, but I haven't really seen too much of it yet. Uh, most of these teams have been actually, you know, sticking together, which is good, because that is the, the general advice. Stick together. You're stronger as five. You don't get caught. You can't throw the game. The problem is nobody's really dying overall, which is prolonging the game. This is one of the longest casts I've ever had to do in any of the, in, in, <laughs> any of my matches, and it's uh, only at the 30-minute mark. You now this is definitely a game that can be done much quicker, uh, but the team's having trouble. So apocalypse from Diablo as well, but Falstad is uh, was not in place. He was low, so he wasn't able to get the Divine Storm on top. A Devouring Mob oh, from wow. Zagara traps three here. Archimedes is so low, they're able to uh, maybe get trapped. They got him. They got him. But yeah, uh, well, that's not done, though. That's the kind of damage that's gone. They only traded out one for one. I am, I am really impressed. <laughs> yeah. That's Nobody else is dying. Uh, but you see Jacobs, he's immediately heading on into the top because Red, despite the fact that they, you know, backed up, they only are missing out that Diablo. So somebody else, if they put this Tychus, for example, in this Dragon Knight, uh, you know, they have themselves that replacement tank. But, uh, oh, Nazebo actually leaving the game is not going to be very beneficial. But still, we had the interference being run here. Artura is actually the guy to get that Dragon. Not... Not the Tychus. I'm a little curious that they put the healer inside the Dragon Knight, but it looks like uh, he's he's looking for blood. He's chasing down the stitches. He's like, hey, hey, Jabahan, let me show you how you how you Dragon Knight. Oh, Just go straight for the core. I'm not messing around. Well, with doing 1440 auto attack, look at that that shield. <laughs> it is absolutely evaporating. I don't think Blue has the damage to deal with this. Artura is just attacking, attacking. Here goes a mighty gust. Blue is desperately trying to stay on. You, you know, you can't shield the core. You don't have any mules. And these auto attacks from Artura are absolutely mind-boggling. There goes one. There goes two. Looking for the hat trick on top of Nazebo. The Nazebo bot. But they can't get it. And Arctura, with the 32-minute Dragon Knight, literally just walks up to the core and says, this is how you do it. And they get themselves their <laughs> win, and they will move on here in the Amateur League. Man, that scaling Dragon Knight, I don't know, you know, he scales in damage, for those of you who maybe haven't been playing or have, didn't know. So to get to 32 minutes does a lot of damage. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fast core. My goodness. Uh, but again, you know, that's uh, that's definitely one of the strengths of this game. It's not meant to drag on. It's not meant to keep going and going and going. And literally just walking up to the core with a full health 30-minute Dragon Knight can end the game. Today I learned if I'm at the 30-minute <laughs> mark and I get a Dragon Knight, it doesn't matter if my entire team's dead. I'm just going to walk up to the core and win because that yes. is what we just saw. Um, so a little bit of a dragged out game. A lot of the team's uh, fights very tanky. A lot of them didn't die, which is great. But when both sides kind of do it, it's, uh, you know, it really does show that the teams are having trouble focusing. They're not seeing the deal. They're not coordinating burst. And uh, that's definitely something for them to look to improve upon. But, you know, who knows? Maybe they're just teams that were made up today. So. Could be. There's a lot of leave. Uh, double support. 
Double support too always, you know, prolongs fights as well, keeping everyone alive too. So that's something that we've been seeing in the meta as well that could have been prolonging the fights a bit more as well. I think it was around like the 25 minute mark or so. We looked at uh, Malfurion's healing on stream and it was like 135,000 healing <laughs> at 24 <laughs> minutes. Like I can't imagine what it was with more and more tranquility as time went on, but you know, like 150,000 health is a heck of a lot of health. <laughs> That is so. a lot of healing. That was just one of the healers, mind you. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there were three more. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But, uh, you know, congratulations. The the Dwarves United, they will move on. And uh, the Risky Biscuits, they're not done yet. They will move into the lower bracket, or uh, as I coined on another, fray, uh, another stream, the bracket of alternate success. No losers here, guys. Okay. Just alternate okay. success. Uh, so there you go. You can use that in, in the future. Uh, just, you know, tag my Twitter. I'll get the royalties and it'll be great. Yeah, and, I'll make uh, sure. I'll make sure. <laughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> Gilly, I'm going to let you choose the next team. Who do you want to cover next? Ooh, well, I do like the names. There's a uh, lot of good names here, for sure. There's yeah. a lot of good names. Let's see. I, let's do Protectors of the Storm in the Rising Taquitos. All right, guys, you heard the girl. When we return, Protectors of the Storm in the Rising Taquitos, the number two seed from last week. We'll see if they can put their pedal to the metal here to advance in week two of the Heroes High Amateur League. 